have a simple question. Why would Donald Trump do this? Why does he keep going out of his way to interfere with the investigation? Well, there are two possible answers. One, he's guilty. Or two, he asked the FBI director for a pledge of loyalty, asked him to stop his investigation of Michael Flynn, fired the FBI director, admitted he fired him because of the Russia investigation, bragged to the Russians that he did it because of the Russia investigation, pressured the attorney general not to recuse himself, pressured the heads of the intelligence agencies to intervene, and tried to fire the special counsel who took over the Russia investigation because he's innocent? Hello, humans. Welcome back to the Quote of the Day Slack Line broadcast. Uh, you are listening to The Boss. The Boss, boss. is coming! That's a made-up, dumb f***ing fairy tale name, you f***. It is Tuesday, January 30th. Um, getting to the end of January here. Hopefully, uh, everybody has kept their resolutions, if they made them. Uh, that was Seth Meyers bringing us into the show uh from his episode last night chatting about uh the ongoing obstruction investigations into Donald Trump um and uh that uh, combines with our quote today brought to us today by Smug Wipes wipe that shit eating grin right off your face with Smug Wipes when you have been caught in the act of being a douchebag and can do nothing but smile your way through it uh, look to Smug Wipes to wipe that shitty grin right off your face. And they bring us our quote today uh, from one great douchebag, Sean Hannity. Yeah, maybe Donald Trump wanted to fire the special counsel for conflict. Does he not have the right to raise those questions? You know, we'll deal with this tomorrow night. Sean Hannity. That is a uh, quote-unquote news correspondent uh that uh decided to skip what is major news about a president of the united states uh wanting to fire a uh, special counsel for the second time uh someone who is investigating him and his obstruction personally um and the news correspondent again quote unquote news uh correspondent decides to skip talking about this uh, this piece of news and move right into a, a car crash um, that had nothing to do with anything. Uh, and uh, what's especially hilarious about this quote is that it came less than three quarters of an hour after Sean Hannity explicitly uh, just like denied and called the allegations false and fake news. And uh, and that their team of researchers hadn't been able to confirm it, and then it was confirmed, and and this is this is how he backed backed his way out of it. And like to me, I know that Fox News has become like a joke, uh, you know, a punchline for a lot of people. But we we can't forget that this is supposed to be a news organization, and that people are getting their news from this place, and when they see stuff like this you know, this kind of disregard for what is uh, a very serious issue, um, you know, in an obvious placate to uh, to people who are, you know, corporate interests of the of the station, you know, just completely dodge facts, uh, dodge uh, any sort of any sort of story that might look bad for this this person who uh, inexplicably holds power over them. You know, I, I don't really understand how a lot of these people can look in the mirror and just and just say, yep, today we're spreading lies. You know, they like they have to know that it's lies and yet they just get out there and do it. Like, do they consider themselves actors or do they consider themselves journalists? Um, I would be really interested to ask to be able to an have that question answered like truthfully from them um which they would probably never answer truthfully to even maybe their closest friends or even themselves to be honest like 
th- there must be some way that they're they're deluding themselves into thinking they're talking about the truth. I don't know how. I don't know how these people sleep at night. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, it must be in really comfortable sheets because they're obviously getting paid a lot to, to spread this bullshit. But, um, you know, it really, really drives me fucking nuts when I see what is supposed to be a news organization, uh, just, you know, dismissing what not even like a few years ago would send people into a frenzy. Like that's what bugs me more than anything is, is the complete reversal of of opinion on basically everything in regards to what the president is supposed to be um you know all the stuff that they threw at obama through all of his can or through all of his uh presidency and then to have basic human decency just shat on over and over and over again by this person and to have them lap it up like it's uh I don't even know. Like, it's what? Like, what are they deluding themselves into thinking that this is? You know, I, I can't I can't accept that people can go home with a pocket full of cash and feel good about about how they obtained that when it's done in this way, when it's done by spreading false information, but it's done by spreading lies and just like gross, gross behavior. Um yeah, I really don't get it. And like another hilarious thing is later on in Fox's broadcast, um, they reversed their position again uh, because the president overseas called the assertion fake news. And so they have to go with that. And so they flip flop again and and assert that it's something that we shouldn't even care about. Um, I'm not sure what the woman's name was, but she sits there and she says, um, you know, this was in June of last year. Like, is it something that we should even really care about? Like, yes. Yes, it's something that we should fucking care about. The President of the United States is trying to fire people left, right, and center. Anybody that is is calling into question uh, his relationships with Russia and, and the reasons why he might want that investigation to be uh, brushed under the rug. Like, I don't understand how these people... Uh, evangelicals, isolationists, conservative, anti-commie, anti-Soviet, anti-Russia people, you know, that all lived through the Cold War are now, like, all cool <laughs> with, uh, with, with very serious concerns about Russian interference in your fucking election, in your, in your democratic process, not even in, like, your business or or some sort of like way of stealing secrets from like your scientists or something like that like they, they're fucking interfering with your democratic process and nobody seems to care or the people that uh the people that would normally uh you know want to go to war <laughs> over any sort of hint at ties with with Russia um, you know, automatically flip flop because the guy now plays for their team. Um, I, I just don't fucking get it. And when you look back at, you know, reasons for presidents getting in trouble before, um, and contrast it with how Donald Trump has behaved in the last year, it's staggering that people have just accepted this and that anything above you know, kindergarten level rhetoric is considered, you know, halfway decent debate on something. So if you go back to Nixon, I mean, Nixon uh, was forced to resign after trying to listen in on his political opponent and then trying to cover it up uh, by paying people off and by trying to uh, and by firing the special counsel like uh, Donald Trump already did and tried to do again. Nixon was going to be impeached for obstruction of justice and he was allowed to resign instead. And so he ended up resigning um, for something that Donald Trump has already done. Uh, they are investigating this stuff, so none of it will be made official until they complete their investigation and bring it forward. But, like, you know, it takes, like, fucking not even 10 minutes of research to 
to look into this stuff and go like, holy shit. Uh, this is like the most serious breach of sovereignty that the U.S. has probably ever seen. And then you compare it to uh, the most famous uh, enemy of Donald Trump, the Clintons, and specifically Bill Clinton, and and what happened uh, with his potential impeachment. He was voted to be impeached because he lied to a justice official about having an affair with a House staffer. He was acquitted, and he served out the rest of his presidency, but like, l- let's frame that again. Articles of impeachment were filed for Bill Clinton... Because he lied about having sex with a staff member at the White House. That's why he was voted to be impeached. I'm not saying that's good. But Donald Trump has been shown to have done these things. And have done multiple terrible things. And has said multiple terrible things. All of which could be considered worse than than what Bill Clinton uh, had done. And uh, and still, like, people are looking at him like he's some fucking deity. Um, when he's doing things that fly in the face of everything that they stand for, like how can an evangelical or even any sort of Christian person look at Donald Trump and think seriously that he's never had a drink in his life and think seriously that he, uh, (laughs) that he knows anything could recite anything from the Bible if you asked him to and think seriously that he goes to church at all regularly or think seriously that he's never done any drugs or anything like that or think seriously that he is any in any way shape or form to be associated with your religion like i don't understand how these people want to support this person again like why 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 a big part of the reason is is the team sports aspect that they take to politics in the u.s where people, you know, the family was a fan of the Republicans, so I'm a fan of the Republicans, so you're a fan of the Republicans, so we're all we so if you aren't a fan of the Republicans then I hate you. It's like, you know, that's not that's not how politics is supposed to work. Uh this is that's not that's not how governance is supposed to work. Governance is is supposed to be a a collaboration, not a competition between two teams. And the other reason, stop me if you're shocked, money. I mean, obviously, they all these corporate donors getting uh, getting uh, Donald Trump into the presidency, and and now asking for favors back and getting those favors back, and again, uh, greed becomes a major issue in uh, in the functioning of our planet. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> to answer Sean Hannity, um, does he not have the right to raise those questions? Uh, questions about what is apparently Mueller's bias for upping his golf fees at uh, Trump's club. Like, <laughs> like you can't be fucking serious. Um, y- y- no, he doesn't have the right to raise those questions when he himself is under investigation um, for this stuff and has shown time and time again to have tried to obstruct the process uh, by which he's being investigated. Like, it's it's so plainly obvious in front of everybody's face that, again, I don't understand how somebody like Sean Hannity, how basically anybody that works at Fox News Network um, or any of these types of outlets that are that are skewing the truth can, like, stand up and look at themselves in the face and say it's they're doing uh, society a service by by going out there and spreading this bullshit. So... Uh, maybe that's where we'll drop it for today. Uh, that quote again is, uh, from Sean Hannity from his show yesterday after discovering that his research team had corroborated that, uh, Donald Trump had tried to fire Robert Mueller for special, uh, as special counsel, uh, for the investigation of his obstruction of justice. Uh, yeah, maybe Donald Trump wanted to fire the special counsel for conflict. Does he not have the right to raise those questions? You know, we'll deal with this tomorrow night. And that is Sean Hannity, who immediately cut to a car chase to distract everybody uh, from what is uh, a very pivotal story in this uh, drama that is Donald Trump's presidency. Uh, That quote again brought to us again generously today by Smug Wipes. Wipe that shit-eating grin right off your face with Smug Wipes. Uh, when uh, When you think you're right and you are shown to be wrong... Uh, and all you can do is smile away the pain. Smug wipes can help you there. 
uh, get those today. I think they are 50% off if you show your Fox News ID at the door. Uh, we would like to thank anybody that has been listening. Thanks again to Crooked Spies for providing the music today. And uh, if you're not, you can follow us on Instagram at the.slack.line, on Twitter at slackline underscore radio, on YouTube at the Slackline Podcast, iTunes, you can check it out there as well. Um, and make sure to subscribe to all of those things. Uh, this has been Slackline Quote of the Day. You have been listening to The Boss. The Boss is coming! Made up dumb oh, fairy tale name, you Thanks again to all those tuning in. And I uh, hope you all have a good day. Damn, Bye for now. The city lights, they just shine so bright. They block the stars at night. The stars at night.